Hello and Grüß Gott. On this video, we're going to remove the valve cover from our 1997 Toyota 4Runner 2.7 liter four cylinder engine, and we're going to check the valve clearances. So, to do that, we're uh, proactively going to go ahead and get some parts. Um, there's on our particular valve cover, there's 10 washer seals, Toyota part number 90210 07001, and our um, gasket is 11213-75030. And then for each spark plug hole, there's one of these particular uh, gaskets that goes there, and it's 11193-15010. Um, so also we're gonna need some other tools, of course, feeler gauge and various um, wrenches and torque wrenches and things like that. But one of the special tools we need to do, need to have in order to remove the shims out of the buckets, this is um, shim over bucket. So the bucket pushes down on the valve, shim is over it, cam is here, and so you have to use a special tool that I got from LC Engineering. And so you use this tool to push down the valve, use this tool to hold it down while you take the shim out to measure it. Now you only do that if you need to take the shim out because the valve's not of the right clearance. So. That's the things we're going to need to get started besides my regular tools. And so we'll be right back and we'll start pulling off the valve cover. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my six point sockets and I'm going to pull off both of the skid plates underneath. And that is so I can get to the harmonic balancer pulley bolt so I can turn the engine clockwise to get it to top dead center. So I'll show you here underneath in just a second of where I'm going to pull the plates off. Okay, I'm going to remove the uh, rear skid plate first by removing the uh, bolts on each side here and there's two in the front so I'll do that pull it off and then I'll take off the front skid plate and so when I get all that done I'll show you what we're gonna do next at this point I'm gonna chalk up the uh, one of the rear wheels I put the car into neutral and I'm going to manually turn the engine using the harmonic balancer pulley bolt it's 19 millimeters by the way I now have access to it from underneath the truck I'm going to turn it till I get to top dead center and then I will go ahead and put the truck back into park so I can take the keys out because it won't let you take the keys out unless you push the special release. So um, we're going to do that and we'll be right back. At this point we have the engine set to top dead center. We don't know which valve sets are open or closed yet. But um, what we have to do now is remove the spark plug wires and this cold exhaust on, I mean cold air intake. On yours, it'll, if you have the stock model, it'll be completely different. But the whole thing is you have to take the uh, positive crankcase ventilation tube out, um, all the spark plug wires, anything here that's going to interfere with uh, getting this cover off, you have to go ahead and remove. So we're going to do that, and we'll be right back. All right, we have the valve cover loose now. We uh, put something in here to protect the intake. Um, we ended up having to take these brackets loose back here in the bottom corner and the ground wire and all that stuff so that we could get it loose. And it's now loose, so hopefully we'll be able to pull it straight up. Still somewhat obstructed with this item over here. We're not sure how to get it loose. We're gonna look into that, then we'll pull the cover, and then we'll show what we're gonna do next. We've pulled off the valve cover now, and as you can see, it's very, very clean in here because we change the oil every two to 3,000 miles. It does make a difference. The uh, gear timing mark is up here pointing straight up, it aligns with uh, the marks here. So that all looks good. I looked at the timing chain and the uh, plastic guides. They look perfect. It's amazing. I would, thought I'd see a lot of wear, don't see any. Um, so the uh, shims are actually under here and I can feel that these ones are loose, which means that cylinder should be a top dead center. So. Um, We'll go in here in a moment and make a diagram and we'll start measuring these and see where we sit. So these um, are your two timing gears and there's dots on the back of these when you're at top dead center. So you have to look on the back and you can see them. Now, in this position here, this cylinder here is at top dead center and uh, this number three right here. So we can check the exhaust valves for these and the minimum has to be 0.010 
and that feeler gauge easily slides under the shim so or on top of the shim but between the cam lobe and the shim so we were worried about our valves being too tight after all these years of driving and they're definitely not so that's a good sign so what I'm going to do is precisely measure how much the clearance is and then I'm going to write it down on this chart we made and then we'll come back and see if we even need to make any adjustments so we'll do that and I'll be right back all right some great news everything is actually well within spec we made all the checks and um, intake should be between uh, 0 0.006 and 0 0.010 and they're almost just right in the middle of that an exhaust should be um, between 0 0.010 and 0.014 and they're pretty much right in the center of spec they're certainly not too tight so I would read on some of the forums that people are having problems with the valves hammering their way into the seats and becoming too tight we don't see that here at all now I think that speaks volumes for um, changing the oil every two to three thousand miles and I also use ASL cam guard in my engines so I'm really impressed nowhere on the timing chain everything looks spotlessly clean inside the engine although I will polish it before I uh, no I won't do anything it's beautifully clean so we're just gonna put the cover back on with new gaskets and we'll be back in a minute to tell you the torque specs on some of the uh, bolts that go down so I'll uh, be right back all right we're ready to start putting the uh, valve cover back on well I'd ordered some of these seals and it turns out from reading they're really a pain to replace and I see no reason to replace them they look like they're uh, high quality material maybe neoprene or something probably will last for years and um, these are still reasonably soft so um, I took some Crytox grease like this and put a thin coating around here and here so they should slide back on but what I am going to do is I'm going to replace this gasket here so I'll put a new gasket in and I'll be right back uh, the new gasket's now on and we put a very 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 thin coat of Crytox grease around it and like I said earlier on these so we're about ready to reinstall this on the truck so we're going to do that and then we'll uh, show you what's next okay we're ready to install the cover and I forgot uh, to mention that according to the instructions it says to put some seal packing which I think means RTV in these four spots where these pieces come out and so I went ahead and just put a little tiny dab on each of those. I used uh, Ultra Black Permatex and um, it's room temperature vulcanized silicon seal. So I'm going to put the cover on now and then we'll be back. All right, at this point, we're going to install the 10 bolts that hold down the valve cover. And um, to get the old pieces off, you sort of have to hold it with a socket and unscrew the pieces. You may have to take a pliers and gently coax them along their way. So here comes the old one and then the new one should just slide right on there. And then I'll just finger tighten them and I'll put all 10 in there and then we'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay these get tightened down to five and a half newton meters. We're going to use a crisscross pattern. I have my hand torque wrench set to 5.5 newton meters. So I'm actually just going to start snugging them up, going in a crisscross fashion. And then I'll tighten them up. And assembly will be just basically reverse of taking it all apart. So that's really pretty much all there is to checking the valves. Um, I may have shot, forgotten to show you how to check with the feeler gauge underneath the cam lobe, but that's pretty self-explanatory. So hopefully this tutorial will help you be able to at least get your cover off and be able to check things out. And hopefully you'll be as lucky as we are and not have to make any shim adjustments. And uh, that's it. So thanks for watching. Tschüss.